everybody understands the unsharp mask. Nobody likes the unsharp mask. Every image needs sharpening. Ah, yes, the unsharp mask. It really is misunderstood. So I'd like to tell you a few things about it. First of all, the term unsharp mask would make no sense at all. Um, why would it be called unsharp if what we're doing is sharpening? Well, this name is actually based on an old photographic technique where a photographer would take a picture of the negative um, onto, so before a print is ever made, they would photograph the negative on a special machine that would uh, reproduce the negative as its opposite. So it would be positive film material. So you have a negative and a positive. And the positive, the reversal of it on film, would be shot out of focus, literally. So that's where the unsharp name comes from. What would happen then, so here's an example is, um, Here's the sharp one on the right and unsharp on the left. And the two negatives would be sandwiched, placed together in the enlarger. And when the print was made, this unsharp negative placed on top would actually, because of the gradient created by the blur, so like the letters have a softness to them, in that territory, what would happen is a halo would be created which would uh, create um, an extreme in either the dark or light if you had an edge that had a lot of contrast. So it was a contour emphasizer based on contrast. It's hard to say. Um, so the technique in, in Photoshop, Unsharp Mask, is really the same technique in a digital version. and that's why it's called Unsharp Mask. And it's one of the best and most productive kind of sharpening tools within Photoshop. So I'm going to go and apply the Unsharp Mask to this image. And this image does need a little bit of sharpening. Um, it's very rough on text, although text is the one place where you can really see the effects. And so that's why I'm using it. Um, one of the first things that I want to mention is that the unsharp mask is located under the menu filter and there's something very particular about this because in Photoshop and by the way we're not in camera raw at all there is sharpening in camera raw but it's not as powerful as in Photoshop but I do want you to be aware that the default setting in camera raw does apply some sharpening so if you're already applying sharpening in your camera and then you're applying sharpening in camera raw without even thinking about it. It's ha happening automatically because it's a default. And default is just a preset. And then to come into Photoshop and apply a lot more sharpening, you could overdo it. So one of the first things I want to say is be very careful how much unsharp mask you use. You can't, you really should be careful not to overdo it. You get all sorts of strange effects. Um, in fact, in, in my Photo 9 class, I teach um, using Photoshop in an unsharp mask in just limited areas of the picture. So, um, the reason that this uh, unsharp mask is located under filter as opposed to image adjust adjustments, which have things like color balance and levels and... Um, you know, shadow and highlight, which is a very powerful tool. Um, the unsharp mask is under filter sharpen, and there it is, unsharp mask. And the reason I mention this, the location of it, is because it's based on how unsharp mask operates. Filters work pixel by pixel by nature. So in other words, the definition of a filter is that it actually uh, will go and it and analyze each pixel as you go so it it will go across the board through the pixels to change them 
And so that is the case with Uncharted Mask too, is it goes through and no, it can't, it doesn't have a brain, so it can't think for you, but it can actually um, take quite a bit of time if you have a really big or large file because it's going pixel by pixel. So I'm going to go into Uncharted Mask, the long awaited. Now, here's where all the confusion comes up. Uh, let me turn everything down to zero. So we've got nothing going on here. And the first thing that I want to do is talk about amount and percentage here. Um, what the percentage does is it decides how extreme dark to light uh, your application of this filter is going to be. So how effective or how um, strong the dark to light contour masking is going to be. Without any radius, amount does nothing. So a lot of times what I'll do is go straight to radius first. What radius does, if you want to think of amount as a halo around the contours, trying to create the illusion of sharpness. So think of this word unsharp on on top of this mask and by the way I decided to cancel because I actually want to bring my image up to a hundred percent it really helps to be able to view your image at a hundred percent um, as as you're sharpening so we don't have a whole heck of a lot of room here but that's kind of scary actually but I'll leave it so now I'm gonna go into sharpen unsharp mask at 100% and you can see that the that the response is actually qu a lot more extreme so what radius does so I'm, I'm skipping amount for now and I'm just going to talk about radius what radius does is it will indicate how big the halo around the, the edge is going to be so the halo of sharpening illusion around these letters the higher I go with radius the wider the halo is going to be so the spread of the halo and um, actually it's recommended that you keep that very low because that's when you start getting a really bad over sharpened look to your image so for now I'm going to just keep it at one which is medium the amount um, tends to be in the range of about a hundred if you're doing much more than that if you're going up to you know 500 something is very wrong with your image so um, that's the point where some people think Photoshop can make it like a completely blurry image sharp and that's not true at all all we're doing is faking out the eye so these two amount and radius are used together to um, create the darkness and then the width of that halo so this is dark to light and this is width and watch as I pump up radius you can see and, and pump up amount so so see here's a lower amount which you don't get such extreme dark to light higher amount see how in here how dark to light it gets lower radius see how it shrinks down those halos higher radius wow that's extreme so see how it just looks like it's glowing now those two work together in a kind of seesaw motion and you actually want to get your image to look as sharp as possible without any halos halos are bad that's the sign of really bad sharpening the last one threshold this one basically tones down what the other two are doing but it tones it down by um, making the filter skip the less detailed the more detailed areas so in other words if you have a very um, minor contour change the higher you place the number the more of those kind of subtle detail shifts it's going to skip and it'll only go in and attack the big bulky contour areas like where the text is so by turning up the threshold what you're doing is you're making the filter less effective on minor details and more effective on big chunky areas 
And one reason that it's good now, 83, forget it. That's not going to happen. Um, this one you do want to keep under 5 and tends to be um, usually about 3 or under. Um, but one thing that happens is as you turn up the threshold, it helps to eliminate the times when unsharp mask will sharpen noise or will sharpen um, grain or dust. And that's one of the problems with unsharp mask is it will sharpen anything that's in a field that's different or has contrast. So that's when a piece of dust becomes a contour and therefore gets sharpened and shows more. So the more you turn up the threshold, the more it will skip those kind of things and just go in for the bigger things. But if you turn it up to this, 26, it's just going to nullify the effect altogether. So I have to bring it down within reason. So when I look at this now, I think it's still over sharpened and I'm going to show you way over sharpened so you can see it again, which is those halos that appear. And really it's the radius mixed with the amount that makes those halos appear. So what I want to do is get it to that point and then creep it back in. Oops, I want you to see the palette here. That would be helpful. Creep it back in until I can just barely see those halos. So there's a preview button here. And if I hit the preview button on, I mean off, I'm sorry, off, on, off, on, can you see the difference? Now it's, it's, there's a whole bunch of noise in here in the darker part of the eye. And so if I bring up the threshold, I don't know if you can see this, but I kind of eliminated a little bit of that noise. I think that's too much. I'm taking it away altogether. So again, when you use these three sliders, first of all, amount that creates darkness in your contrast, radius, which widens the halo as you go, and threshold, which basically tells the computer to skip the more minor details and go in for the bigger area, chunkier areas. When you use those all together and slide them like a seesaw kind of effect, you get to the perfect sharpening. So that's it and for the unsharp mask. And I'm going to cancel that for now. And then I want to talk about one other newer type of sharpening, which is called Smart Sharpen. Now this palette is quite a bit more complicated. And I want to tell you up front that I still, even though this is newer, Smart Sharpen, with the CS series, I still prefer the Unsharp Mask. Smart Sharpen um, gives you some extra options, but I don't think it gives you any better sharpening. Um, if you're going to use it, you want to use it in advanced mode. And it has pretty much a lot of the same uh, sliders. Amount and radius work the same. If you keep it, you have a little pop-up window here. And Gaussian Blur will make it work pretty much just like the Unsharp Mask that we saw before. And then there's these other ones, Lens Blur and motion blur. So if someone's blurred in your picture because they're running. Um, but these, boy, that's tricky to try and sharpen something like that. You can only just slightly improve it or slightly improve the contour. But a lot of people use this one for motion blur because that's an option. Um, but ultimately, one thing that's good about um, this smart sharpen is these two fade effects. One is for highlights and it'll actually fade the effect of the halo in the sharpening just in the highlights and then there's one that's shadow and it'll fade that effect just in the shadow areas now if you fade both you have basically canceled it out so you have to choose one or the other so let me show you what I mean here I'm going to um, over sharpen this image so I'll go you know extreme lot of radius. Well, I better not go too far. I won't be able to get rid of it. Okay, let's say there. 
um, and take it a, a look at our image and remember we're at 100% on this image and that is key. Our preview also down here in the window and also in the um, in the unsharp mask is also at 100% and what you can do is when you click on it, see how I have the little hand in that box? It takes you back to your original and then unclick and it shows you what you've done. So click, unclick. And that can also be done just by doing the preview on and off on your image. So two little, two different ways of looking at your image. That's personal choice. Um, so here I've got these big halos and what I have to decide is where is it most offensive in my highlights or in my shadows? And this one's a no brainer. It is most noticeable, the halos in my highlights. And that just means lighter areas of the picture. Um, so what I'm going to do in Smart Sharpen, and let me, let me scroll over to that area. Okay, there it is. I'm going to go to Highlights and literally fade. There we go. I'm fading the effect. Now, it's kind of hard to see on screen what's happening here, but it, what it did is it kind of made it a lopsided sharpen. It kept darkness in the black area, which might be a little hard to see, but it actually kept the sharpening on that side of the letters. And then in the white area, it just faded half of the filter. So, you know, in this case, um, it is kind of helpful in reducing some of those bad effects on this image. But for my money, um, I really think that the unsharp mask gives you plenty of control. And I also feel that you really shouldn't be sharpening that far or that extreme to need to fade those halos in highlights or shadows. But it's something to try out um, and works really well for specific reasons. The last thing that I want to say is that sharpening, first of all, I want to remind you to be careful. Don't overdo it. It looks horrible when you overdo it. But also, the content of your picture, once again, makes a difference. If you have like a picture of a building that has, um, you know, real sharp, hard edges and you use the unsharp mask, I would go very uh, liberally with the unsharp mask. In other words, you can use a lot of amount, a lot of radius, and that's based on the content of the images, very hard edge. If you were using it on a portrait, then I would actually tread very lightly with the unsharp mask. You don't want your portrait to look harsh, hard. It sharpens the skin and then that doesn't look good. In fact, most people want airbrushing, which is the exact opposite. So think about what your image is before you start applying uh, unsharp mask across the board. But for the most part, your mantra should be that every image needs some kind of sharpening. And you might have already done it in your camera and in your camera raw processing. But don't let anyone tell you that you don't need some sharpening because you're going from uh, the imagery in the world to your sensor, then onto your computer, and then onto a piece of paper. And so along the way, you're going to lose definition and the unsharp mask will help you retrieve some of that. So don't forget about the poor little unsharp mask. Thank you very much.